mind. Oh, it's very tough for me to say which audience is the most interesting because they're very different. I like talking to children, but it's very challenging, especially the cosmology, I always say, requires people to have achieved puberty to truly appreciate. And that's because the idea of existentialism, six, you know, 12 year olds don't get, but 14 year olds do. The idea of being embedded in this giant universe. If you explain that concept to uh, you know, a fifth grader, uh, 11 year old, they, they sort of get it, but they don't really get the whole impact of it all. The idea of a universe being infinite or finite, that's something a concept a 14 year old gets and an 11 year old doesn't, typically. Even very smart 11 year olds don't really get it. So if I'm going to talk about cosmology, I typically don't talk to um, people in uh, kindergarten through sixth grade about my work directly because it's something that requires people to be just a bit older. But I, on the other hand, I do like talking to about astronomy, but I'll talk about planets and I'll talk about you know just how big the Earth is compared to the universe, and they get that. So that is a group that I really enjoy talking to because the kids are so uh, enthusiastic. I mean, if you talk to uh, 10 or 11 year olds, no matter where in the world you talk to them, they're almost the same. They all have a wonder and excitement, they're positive, and then somehow in the next two or three years we make science boring and terrible to them, so they don't like it. So it's great to have that audience. Um, uh, an enthusiastic group of 15 year olds is great because they're thinking about things for the first time and you, you can really open up their minds. But normally, of course, when you give a talk to a bunch of 15 year olds, you've got five who are interested and 25 who want to be doing something else. And so that's quite a challenging dynamic um, because, you know, I'm there to be excited about people, not trying to control people from beating up on their friends and things. So that's probably one of the hardest groups to do. The general public, I really enjoy giving talks to the general public because they really, I think I can explain what I do and show excitement um, in a way which uh, I think most of the public probably don't get as much as they should. I think they, can, they genuinely feel excited after the talk, most of the time. Uh, and then there's my colleagues. So the colleagues. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just trying to say, I enjoy, say, it's a very different talk. When I'm giving these other talks, it's theater. It's like doing, you know, Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> you know, I've done the public talk, which I'm doing on Tuesday. I've done it 200 times in the last year and a half. So it's theater. But it really is theater, and in the same way that I enjoy, you know, being in a Shakespeare play in high school, I, I enjoy it. It's, it is theater. Around my colleagues, it's not theater. It's pretty serious. I'm trying to not just inform, because they already know what I'm trying to do is to get in a new idea or a point of view and get the action. And I gotta be ready because I'm gonna get hard questions. If I say anything wrong, they're gonna let me know. And so that's more of part of my, my job. So I enjoy it because it's part of my job. But it's uh, it's a different, it's a very different thing. It's uh, it's uh, not it's not theater. And so as I said, it's very difficult for me to say which one I like the most because obviously I love being a scientist, but I enjoy the theater. And I, I I can do it 200 times in a row and still enjoy the theater. And I always grade myself on my talks. And, you know, if I go below a five, I'm pretty unhappy. And I never, ever give myself. I've only done two nines in my entire life. So you know, I grade it that way. See how you do. And I try to change the talk a little bit, slowly change it, try ideas out, 
Every talk's just a little different than every other talk. And slowly change it over time.